Hello, my name is Max, and today I'll be talking about creating custom uh, extensions for SCOM console user interface. First, let me introduce myself. So, my name is Max, I live in New Zealand. I work for a managed cloud provider called Computer Concept Limited, or CCL, in the monitoring and automation department. I joined this company more than five years ago, um, when it was called Rivera. I started as a system administrator, but then quickly moved to SCOM support and maintenance, and then started development uh, my first management packs. In today's session, uh, I'll give a short overview of SCOM console architecture and give you a few reasons why anyone would need to develop new UI extensions for the console. Uh, with two quick examples from my open source management packs. Uh, then I'll give you some jump start to do, and then we'll move to three practical examples. So, why any new user interface might be required in SCOM console? Let me switch slides. Uh, well, during my career in CCL, I created several management packs for people from different teams such as virtualization, storage, or digital experience. They all are great specialists in their areas and indeed they are very smart people. However, I noticed that they all were struggling to use SCOM console at least for from the beginning. So I realized for myself as a monitoring solution developer that if I want people to use my solutions and if I want them to get most value out of what I'm doing, I have to create not just good monitoring management packs, but also uh, must make it easy and intuitive uh, to use and them and to configure. I also remember myself about 10 years ago when I installed SCOM for the very, very first time. I opened the console. I had been staring into it for about 10 minutes and then I understood nothing and simply closed it. Well. To illustrate such an inconvenience for a new user, let's take an example. A typical management pack for an unhosted subject such as a network device, URL, external my server, or just simply an IP address, etc. Anything you can cannot really discover automatically. Usual approach is to make a root discovery read device information from a file. What does that mean from practical perspective for whoever is using your management pack? What steps a new user have to do? So first, they would install the management pack. Yep, that's easy. Look the changes in the console, because no one reading documentation. Uh, they probably would find some new views, alert views, etc. But they won't be won't be a lookup button or sorry an add button or a wizard in administration section or nothing like that. So they say then go to read documentation finally. Realize they need to create a file, make it available, then make an override for a discovery. Creating file is not very easy as well. Because it's easy when you have one management server, but there are, if there are multiple management servers, you need to find a network location where to put it and make it accessible for all RNS accounts from all management servers. Or if you put it locally, it might become out of sync over time and yeah, some different issues. Okay, the file is created, put in a, lo a shared location or duplicated to all management servers or perhaps gateways. Then they need to find the override. 
Well, documentation will read a few minutes ago. They need to refer again and remember how it was called. Some discovery or discover another subject or... Okay, they need to find the discovery. They already need uh, have to have no knowledge and experience working with SCOM console, how implement, uh, implement Avirite, where to save Avirite. That question always puzzles uh, new people. And they are looking for any advice from yeah, SCOM administrator or support. So it looks like too much troubles, right? All it means by the end that people will be less willing to use your product. So bottom line, make your management pack setup a configuration easy and intuitive. At least put some simple instructions in a splash screen uh, in your root monitoring folder. At this slide, I'm, I summarized some major reasons for adding new UI to SCOM console. The top one, as we just discussed, is discovery of monitoring targets. Second is for agent tasks. Agent task is extremely powerful tool. Each agent task is a piece of code which accepts some input, runs on a specific agent locally with all privileges and delivers results back. Possibilities for agent tasks are almost infinite. And the best thing, you can initiate uh, agent task to start from AWSCOM console interactively or from SDK API programmatically. But how many people really use those tasks? I bet not many. First, because they had to locate. Say, a task to return current disk usage. Yes, you can find out disk usage from performance data, for instance. But say we have such task is bound to logical disk target class, which means you have to locate and pick up an instance of logical disk to run the task because com console show uh, available agent tasks inter interactively and changing context depending on what object is selected. So you need to locate that object of the type which your agent task is actually targeting. Uh, there are multiple ways to locate objects on SCOM console, but they require deeper knowledge and great experience with using SCOM console. Uh, and none of those ways is shorter than five clicks. So again, there are too much trouble to actually find it and to run the task. So people, yeah, not using them much. Therefore, making special UI to run these tasks and formatting re returned results should help people make more value out of SCOM. Another good reason uh, to create a custom UI is fine-tuning of your MP, which is covered here. We've created a delete overrides, uh, enable disable rule monitors, etc. Um, yeah, edit rule monitor configuration when um, some complex system require syntax is required for properties such as lists, expressions, JSONs, yeah, maybe even embedded XML, anything which is not simple enough to put in one line. And yeah. So next two examples what we can do with such uh, UI. Okay, the first example is about an agent task. In my control center open source management pack, I created an agent task to query Windows service status. But on the top of that, I created a UI to display results. Let's take a quick look in my test lab. So I'm now switching to test lab. Here one of servers in my test lab, and there are all real contextual tasks for it. And along of among of all of them, there is a query service list task. So I overwrite results, I put service name to get information about just one server, and I 
also ask about additional parameters. Override edge, run. Task run successfully, which is good. And it returns a custom XML data item. Yes, XML is a human readable format. And of course, yeah, you can read it. Name, description, it's all pretty obvious. But start and type aren't that obvious because they are encoded as flags. And anyway, it's not very nice to read something that technical or two-way two computerish text. So let's see how the same task looks into in, in the custom UI. So we switch into control center view. I pick up the same server. I load server tasks, pick up the same service, and double clicking on that service, and then clicking on refresh button, I actually doing completely the same. I run the task I run before, but task is run programmatically and results being parsed and presented into in the nice UI, which I built to mimic uh, native services application in Windows. And you can see that um, status and service type actually being translated into running and having own process. Yeah, it has, that this service doesn't have parameters, but if we pick up another, for instance, it might have some dependencies, for instance, if I'm lucky. Yeah, it has some parameters, for example, and it has dependencies, which again showed nicely in a tree control. So this that was the first example. The second example is to insert or create an object of a custom class in SCOM. Again, I am using my another open source management pack. This time it's Connectivity Monitoring MP. This custom UI allows to add a new website or new FQDN address. And let's take a look how it looks like in the lab. So switching back into lab again. This time I navigate to uh, Connectivity MP. There is already one created. I click, right, right click, new destination, just enter some example. Choose which server will be managing that and simply click OK. So just to illustrate that, yes, this is a custom object instance. I'll switch into discovered inventory and change type to fully qualified domain name. here. So these are two objects and this one is the one which I just created with all properties I've been entering here, which is good. Next we're going to create a first demo, a first UI extension to SCOM console. But before doing that, let me actually uh, take some notes. I quickly switch to next slide and then return to this one. 
so first of all, be aware that some things I'll show in, in examples are kind of ritual. That's because I don't always know why this is done that way. Most of my knowledge I'm sharing together with you today is not from any documentation, but from reverse engineering. Secondly, don't afraid if this and next slide doesn't make any sense for you so far. I put them here in advance and in the very, very beginning before any demos to save you dozens of hours of debugging, crashing applications and extensions. Just take them as commandments so far. So for all your SCOM UI extension projects, there is a list of libraries uh, you must reference, list of libraries you may reference, and another list which you must not reference under any circumstances. Uh, by the way, all these libraries can be found from console installation on your server or on any computer where console is installed. So first block of libraries which you must reference contains uh, assemblies which has core SCOM framework components and interfaces. The second block is actually access to SCOM SDK because you may need or may not need it in your application. And some optional components from uh, last two libraries which you may inherit or reuse in your extension. And final block, which you must not reference, is about libraries or assemblies which are used by health service. Normally, you probably won't need to use them because they are for health service and we are creating not a managed module, we're creating a SCOM console application. However, you may willing to import them or reference them when you need to process data types and the most common data uh, the, uh, item type uh, property back. However, you must not do that and you have to use your own XML parsing procedures or use any third party components doing XML parsing uh, because if you reference any of those assemblies, your extension will crash the console. So for the next slide, and again, few notes which doesn't make any sense so far, but they will will become more clear later when you get more information about console extensions and the architecture. So first of all, like you or not, but SCOM console in the Windows form application. Yes, it's quite old technology, but they keep in developing it this way. And fearful for seamless integration, you have to use the same technology. So don't use Windows presentation framework. Then never create your own connection to SCOM management group. Using, for example, last connected management server from Windows registry, because you don't know where to connect, so you have to find what management server address and where is it. And establishing your own management group has huge drawbacks. So users, first of all, can run multiple SCOM consoles, maybe even at the same time, and being connected to different management groups. And connecting to last used management group from registry may connect you to wrong management group, not the one which is currently displayed in console. And that will be a huge disappointment for user. And it can make a catastrophic events, uh, like if current console connected to test environment, but registry contains production environment management server address. And user may think that they making changes into test, but actually make changes to production, which is not really good. Then users can run console from non-trusted environment, say another domain with no trust or workstation, and therefore they have to enter their credentials to connect 
to console. But when you try to create your own connection, this option probably isn't available. And your own connection attempt will fail. And performance and memory usage as well are important because each connection takes about 100 megabytes of RAM and it also takes about 5 to 10 seconds to actually connect so user of your solution may think oh, my application is frozen. Um, next item is I advise you to use strong named assemblies for better version control. Uh, when assembly is strong versioned, uh, sorry, strong named, it means every version change will require SCOM re uh, console to reload the assembly. Otherwise, you probably would need at least restart console, console when you make any modifications into your uh, assembly with your custom UI implementation or perhaps clearing console cache, uh, which will slow down uh, any development and testing. Um, all your core components uh, must be inherited from MomViewBase or its descendant. So MomViewBase is the most core uh, class for any views, dashboards, etc. And last is just a simple decoration but using a branded colors static class to make uh, your component look more organic will create a good impression uh, of user and will make them look like a native um, console elements. Well, let me switch back to our demo and Due to limited session time, I won't be able to actually type all code. So I have it pre-built and pre-compiled, pre-typed, but I'll try to explain each code line and why it's here. So now let's, be, let's switch to Visual Studio. And this is our first project. So first of all, to create any SCOM UI extension, you always need to create two projects. One is management pack, where we'll be describing what we implement and where to put it, how to present it to user, and actual .NET framework class library project, where we put our implementation of our UI. So we create one project, another project, then I created a user component, user control inherited from a mom view base class. Then inside management pack project here in XML, I describe how to present it. We'll touch it a little bit later. Uh, now let's see at our user control. So user control is a simple resizable form uh, with just some text here and here. Uh, list box where we are go I'm going to put uh, currently connected users and few informational labels. Now let's browse through the code and see how we can achieve these goals. So first of all, each uh, custom control shall have four different constructors. This is one of the things I call ritual. I don't really know if the all constructors are required, which constructor is actually called. I never did that experiment and what would happen if one of them is missing. Uh, but all native Microsoft components doing uh, implementing all four co constructors. So I'm just following the same 
best practices which Microsoft is doing. So all constructors are equal and they call initialize companion standard method which is created by Visual Studio itself uh, except the last one which also connect to site uh, when site information is provided. So this is all about... Ah, and I also put my own pre-initialization here uh, which in this case is just to set uh, my component colors uh, by calling refresh color method and the same method is actually used in response of system color change or for color change events and what this method is doing is just uh, setting background color of my component to either branded colors, that's what I mean, which makes it look, make it looks natural, or to system control uh, color when high contrast schema is used. Okay. Then a couple of things are written here. So for initialize, we don't run through whole initialization when it's in design mode. That's because our component isn't connected to SCOM console and sometimes SCOM console or SCOM management group connection isn't available from uh, environment where Visual Studio is running. So we skip this. Uh, view name is just a string which shown to user and explains what they're looking at. And finally, I, I write on load method, which is called when form is fully initialized and being load. And the very important things here that we can now reuse management group property, which is inherited from a uh, mom view base. And that management group is the key use, key reason for using uh, or inheriting from mom view base, because that represents the current SCOM console connection. And as I said previously, this is extremely important. And also another note, we cannot use that connection on during the initialization phase because it will cause a uh, null exception. It's only available after form is fully initialized. So here we simply set text of our label to connection uh, management group name, management group ID, and they also call in a management group get connected users uh, method to fill uh, our list box. Now let's see how it looks in the lab. So I already installed that uh, project. It's here under our demo control. And voila, it shows our string. I actually also made it centering. And you see background color is matching the color schema, so it looks natural. And it shows all connected users. There are no much real users because it's just laboratory, but it's doing its job. So let's return here. We skip that. And yeah, here are the results. So I hope that demo shows you how easy you can actually add. Oh, my bad. I have to switch quickly back to Visual Studio and actually come through this one, which I promised but never did. So first step is we incorporating our class library or our assembly into our management pack. So we do it in resources. Uh, just a simple note. So when we say assembly, that means an assembly for console. When we say deployable assembly, this is a, an assembly for health service. Um, yes, yeah, my assembly is strong named. I have to put here full qualified name. Yeah, null stream isn't true because there are 
some actual bytes in this assembly and we need to, in, to include it into uh, our management pack. So inside UI, first of all, we tell SCOM that this is Windows assembly. Next, we have to create view type and view type has two main parameters is which assembly implementation is and what actually type or C sharp or .NET class is actually implementing that solution. Uh, next thing we create an actual view which can be reused uh, by any other management packs because I put it as a public. Uh, category is compulsory and must be one of predefined values. Then I simply create, and yes, view also refers to view type, which we created previously. So view refers to view type, view type refers to uh, implementing component. Then I simply create folder and folder item, which uh, bring this view into console and some uh, yeah, language pack to make it display. So this is how uh, we can tell SCOM to actually use our component and display and lo load it and display in SCOM console. Okay, so back to our slides. So I hope this demo show you how easy you can add new views to SCOM console. With just a few lines of code and some time informed designer, you can create not just a simple static extension, but also demonstrate access to shared management group connection. And in fact, uh, just added a new function with, I just added a new function in SCOM console, view currently connected users. So if you are looking for such functionality in your production environment, you can take this example and modify it to be a fully functional add-on to your console. Now we go into the second example, which unfortunately is way, way more complex. This is because we have to implement lots of details to create a grid control. So after most core mom view based class, uh, which is grand parent for almost all console components, next most used component type is grid view base. This class is a bait class for implementation of the most used uh, view types, such as state type view. And other successor of this class are agent managed computer view, installed management packs view, discovered inventory view. So all these views are actually inherited from grid view base. There are in total 25 direct successors successors for the, from that class in standard Microsoft uh, console code base. So grid view base class is not a fully good component and it needs some tweaks to be fully functional. For example, state view uh, component, which is inherited from it, has about 1,500 lines in its implementation. Unfortunately, implementations like state view are internal or sealed class, so we cannot inherit uh, our components from them. On the top of that, uh, none of classes inherited from grid view base is designed for future extensions. Uh, therefore, unfortunately, we have to get the base class and do quite complex work. Note uh, that in my open source free library, I had another inherit class inherited from grid view base, uh, which do some work, uh, but not all of it. Uh, but anyway, you're welcome to use it. So to make successful grid view base with details, uh, there are a few choices you have to do. And first of all is choose a type or class uh, for displayed items. That class will be transferring information between your grid view and detail view. 
It can be absolutely anything, but some classes like monitoring object uh, or instance state uh, kind of natural choose. Then you will need to create an implementation for a query, which queries all objects to display in uh, the grid view, uh, or you can use predefined state query. Uh, then you would need to implement actual detail view class inherited from cache detail view and implement grid view class, which inherited from grid view base. Again, this demo way more complex and due to limited time, I wasn't able to show all the details. However, uh, you're always welcome to explore all demo projects in my GitHub repository and ask any questions at GitHub, my blog, or in LinkedIn. Uh, next slide, slide is about big, big trick. When you inheriting from a grid view base, never try to bring form designer to show that component. It will crash your Visual Studio. Here I describe how to avoid it. Now we're switching back to Visual Studio and open the second solution. So this time I start with a management pack code, which is pretty similar. So it just include resource, create the same, absolutely same stuff to define view, view type and folder element to actually show it, it in the console tree. And then we go into actual implementation. Be always careful. So this is grid view base, and we, as I said again, must not bring form designer for that component. So we implement uh, inheriting from grid view base. We made the choice what type will bring information between grid and detail view. Uh, this is query which brings all our um, company elements to display and implementing iParent view, we notify um, SCOM, Dutch, SCOM framework, which we has it and how to transfer our um, details into the detail view. Well, um, there are same for constructors, view name, which is familiar, again, playing with some colors. Uh, then we need to manually actually define all columns, uh, which will be displayed in the grid. Uh, you can explore it later. So same refresh color. Um, yeah, when query is created, we need to set a class for that query. Uh, the regions add some context menu and tasks uh, to our view. And I probably would concentrate on a parent view implementation. So when SCOM console sees that our class is implementing a parent view, it reads uh, type uh, of detail view implementation and it will be creating uh, instance of that class for us. And second method is actually return currently selected item or currently selected items inside the grid. Uh, I also added some parent personalization support in here so you can uh, choose which columns uh, to display in the grid view and save this information with your SCOM console personalization. And they suggest some uh, help helpers methods. Um, but what you can design, you can design your detail view class. And I can easily open this one. And yeah, actually second, my second example is to show <coughs> logical disk contained in 
a select computer. So grid view shows computers and detail view shows which disks are available here. So if we look into the code, uh, the main method here is on cache update. Uh, SCOM console will call uh, this method each time when grid view selection has changed. And here I simply find all disks using standard um, SCOM SDK API. And now let's look how it looks in the lab. So I'm switching to the next one. And here I pick up a server. It says this server has just C drive of that size. And another server actually has three logical disks of another size. And I also can yeah, call personalization and remove some, and it will be saved with my SCOM console. Great. I have just a few minutes left, and I'm, I'll try to fit the next demo into here, uh, but the demo itself is even way more complex. But again, you can find it in my GitHub repository. So this demo is not like a real demo, but maybe a proof of concept that you can uh, use UI extensions to create different uh, custom objects in there. So again, same, I'm switching to here. Oops, sorry, wrong one. I'm actually switching to Visual Studio. So manage, uh, yeah, management pack is pretty much the same, but it also define a demo class, just a yeah, simple scom class with few properties, which will be uh, editing. And here I have a component which actually performs an edit. And that's because it it's my own grid; it's not inherited from uh, scom grid view. I can yeah simply edit it right in here in Visual Studio. So this is grid, this is our class, and let me demonstrate how I can edit this. I put that into administration section. So oh, I didn't deploy it. Okay, let's try compile and deploy it. Great, switching back to lab and perhaps we'll be able to see some magic when it just appears here. Yes, it does, which is another great because you can replace your companions on fly without actually users having to restart a con. Uh, console. They only need to switch to another view and get back to uh, the view you updated. Here we can just put some
and hope it works. And to demonstrate that it actually worked, let's pick up my demo class. So demo class name is comma phone demo class. Back to the lab, uh, back to discover it inventory, change target class, pick up this class, and yes, it shows exactly the values we just entered. So I think that gives you a good idea how you can uh, extend Scum Console to actually insert your device, IP addresses, remote appliances, etc. Uh, classes in SCOM rather than using um, file based discovery. That's great. So now few I put a few minutes uh, to give you ideas how you can troubleshoot edge. Uh, so SCOM console has the entity cache where it stores SCOM object class instances to display in different views. The entity cache is well documented and when it said clear console cache, it's always about that cache. But it also has another cache and all these class libraries I just created, they actually stored in the type cache, which is located in AppData local Microsoft System Center Service Manager, surprisingly, 2010 uh, folder. So, at this slide, you can see yeah, some uh, steps you can actually make to troubleshoot your uh, extension which did not work very well or uh, crashed console and how we can get rid of it and make another attempt. Uh, yeah, for Postscriptum, I hope that it was a useful session for you. And now all of you has a lots of ideas and uh, how you can improve SCOM console experience for your users. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover lots of topics here due to limited time. And these topics can be like context menu in the grid view, because if you notice in my um, connectivity monitoring management pack, there are lots of different custom tasks and context menu um, displayed. Add global entity task like Health Explorer. It's also possible to create your own version of Health Explorer. Add global alert task. Again, you can add another action will be, which will be contextually displayed when you select any alert and you can create your own alert view. Create view contextual menu tasks, etc, uh, etc. Et so. But again, I welcome you into my GitHub repository and review my open source management packs where all these items has been implemented. Now, questions, please.